join in. So as I'm looking here, it looks like we don't have anybody waiting right now, which is great on this beautiful morning. So what I'm going to be doing is I want to just kind of go through a couple of things that we're going to talk about just to start with. We're going to be working with pencil, paper, eraser. Um, if you have a Sharpie, you might want to do that. Um, we're going to be doing some birds. Now, I had to try to pick out three birds that we could do. You're going to use uh, colored pencils. Are those oil pastels. Oh, oil pastels. Nice. E uh, she's got uh, Danielle. That will work nice to color in your birds when you're done for the uh, um, Charlie Harper project. So I'm just going to admit a few more people. And so I'm going to be doing kind of a step-by-step -step drawing. We're going to have the camera pointing down, and I'm going to be working on paper today so that you'll kind of see as I'm doing it how I'm, I'm doing it. And I'll check in with you guys every once in a while. So like I said, we're doing uh, uh, an American artist, Charlie Harper. He was born in 1922 uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he spent most of his life in Detroit. He uh, died in 2007. He was kind of a, a forgotten artist, but then there was somebody who found him, found his work, and decided this guy is amazing, and he is. What he would do, and I think the best way to, and I'll show you his work, he flattened things down to shapes. He is one of those amazing artists that you look at, and he could take any animal, person, car, and he flattened them down into nice flat shapes, and he used these amazing colors. I'm just going to share some pictures before we get started on this. I'm going to see, I've got to admit a few more. Awesome. I'm, I'm happy seeing all these wonderful people joining our uh, drawing today. So I'm going to switch cameras. I'm going to go pointing down. I'm going to go through a couple of Charlie Harper pictures and then we'll get started. Okay. Any, everybody ready? You got your pencil, your paper, everything's going right. So let's see if I can do this. I've got a new computer that I'm working on. So if I run into some problems, let me know. Okay. I'm check. There we go. Down. All right. Perfect. So it's, is that upside down? There we go. So what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you is that guys, can you guys, I'm just making sure I've got this correct. It is. All right. Now it's correct. I was getting disorientated. That's what happens every once in a while. So this is a book and it's cute because he goes through different pictures. Again, I'm going to just show you a few of these, but look at how these birds, he just works on the specific shapes and he gets these birds very flat and you see all the motion going on here, which is amazing. Now in this one, he's showing motion by having the white lines kind of in, invisible. It's a mountain quail. Um, this is a green jay one of my favorites. I have so many favorites. Mountain Bluebird. Wow. Okay, so you look at it and you're going to see that it's these shapes. He's not worried about all the kinds of things. I love his little drawings. Now, it's like almost cave people here. You can see them in the side. There's a guy using a bow and arrow. It looks like a deer here. Here's the sun. I mean, this drawing is just amazing. And then again, here's a butterfly with uh, this uh, scissor-tailed flycatcher. Of course, you'd have a butterfly trying to chase. Uh, a cactus wren. This is a burrowing owl. We got one underground and one up above. I mean, you just got to love how he does that. I'm just going to uh, admit another person here. And here's some birds. I got to find the flamingo, which is my absolute favorite. Carolina parakeet. Now this is birds and words. What's funny is that his his words that go along with these birds are as, as fun as the paintings that he does of the birds. Um, passenger pigeon and uh, Eskimo curlew. Ivory billed woodpecker. That's a cool one. And I'm looking at the whooping crane here. Here's the trumpeter swan. This is on the cover. 
I'm looking for my famous flamingo, which I haven't found yet. I like this uh, painted bunting. It says the painted bunting is in advertising, direct mail advertising, that is. While his conservative wife remains in the background, he is busy in the garden, the hedgerow, the thicket, proclaiming himself in glorious technicolor and singing commercial Pitua, Pietua, I eat you, I will eat you too, quickly to anger and mighty in combat. He will fight to the finish for home, mate, and the joy of conquest. Once a victim of a caged bird dealers, he was known in the marketplace as non Pirelli, without an equal. So it's kind of a, he's, as you can see, the little words that go along with it kind of help you just kind of really understand all the different birds here. So here's my, the famous uh, uh, figure eight flamingo. Look at his neck. He turned it into this eight. He's got the flamingo flying over here. And it's just amazing. I think that how he creates some fun things with how long and skinny the legs are. He accentuates all the things he finds about these different birds. Here's a purple. Oh, I just love it. There's a, a snowy egret. Look at the feathers. He just kind of makes them so interesting with it. And here is a wood evis fighting with a crab. A limpkin. So I'm just going to show a few more. You're getting the idea how he does. Look at these owls. Bank swallow. And you know how swallows, they're in usually bridges or in walls. And you can see they're all in the holes there. It's cool. Ruby-throated hummingbird at night. Oh, that's cool. Really, I think that uh, you can kind of get a good feeling for these birds. Now, when I was going through this, I decided that this is going to be part one of my Charlie Harper birds because there was way too many for me to choose and I needed it to come back. So I'm going to, you'll be seeing that I'm going to have part two and part three. Look at the snowy owl. You know how he's got the, it looks like he's wearing bifocals here. I just love it. So, and he's, he's captured a little mouse. Yeah. Eek, I know. And then I stopped here because this is uh, the guy I'm going to start with today is the Cardinal. Um, the, the Cardinal is one of my favorites. One of the things about the Cardinal is their color, but their beautiful song. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on this Cardinal to start with. And I'll show you that. And then we'll kind of go through step by step doing it. What's beautiful about the Cardinal and what's so special here is that right by the art center, we have a bunch of cardinals and they're singing all the time. We have one tree, I call it the cardinal tree because it has sometimes 10 to 12 cardinals in it. And they're just singing up these songs. They're flying around, having fun. I just love cardinals. And I loved the, the other day, just one quick story about the cardinals. I saw these two male cardinals chasing a blue jay because they teamed up together to get this blue jay away from their nest. It was pretty great. So what I'm going to have you do now is everybody get their paper out. I'm going to bring out my piece of paper. This is uh, uh, one of the cardinals I did. And I'm going to show you the drawing that we're going to work from is this one here. I'm going to have it like that. I'm going to have my drawing next to it. Okay, so you guys can see the different drawing and I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using a darker uh, um, pencil for this project just so that everybody can see it. If I'm drawing this one, I'm going to prefer to use an F pencil, but I'm using a, a, a this is a Derwent Onyx pencil. I, I really like this pencil too. So what we want to do is we want to start with this shape right here. This is an upside down teardrop. So what we want to do, if you want a big one, you can do it. You can do it either sideways or up and down. I'm going to have it so everybody can kind of see as I'm working. So I'm going to make a dot up here like this and a dot down here, okay? 
I just I see that I have uh, one person to admit. Okay. Can so, you show those dots again? Pardon me, the dots? Yes, right up here, right down there. Can you guys see those? This is, now the dots. I don't see them. I'm gonna make them as, a little bit bigger here so you can see them. Can you see those now? Well, they're a little bit blurry. Well, you'll see it as the teardrop goes and we can kind of work together on it, okay? Okay. Thank you. So the, dot, the dots are just ideas of where you're going to start and how far you're going to go down to make your teardrop. So what we want to do now, if you want a, a cardinal that's a little chubby, you're going to make it a little bit fatter. If you want one that's thinner, I'm just going to come down and do kind of this teardrop here. Oop, my pencil just broke. Might have to already. I was pressing a little bit hard so that you could see my lines. Okay, so you can see that I'm just coming. Now you can sketch it out. I'm doing it so you guys can see that. So that's how we're starting, guys. With the teardrop is going to be how we're going to start our cardinal to start with. Everybody, let's wait to get everybody to get there. They're cardinal. I'm, I've got two pencils. I'm ready to go here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to be working on his head. But I'm just going to, I want to just check to make sure everybody has got their, I'm going to see what my chat has to say too here. Yes, there is a question, can you use a kneadable eraser? Absolutely, and what a kneadable eraser is, guys, is just this guy right here. And uh, as everybody's working on this, I'll show you. You can use this eraser. What's nice about this eraser is that there's no crumbs involved in it, and it uh, does a really nice job. These are kneadable erasers. You can pick them up just about any art store, Michaels, uh, Blick has them. They're all great. So now I'm going to start. Yes, I see that. Very nice, Danny. Uh, so I'm going to start with his head. And what I want to do is I want to come with a straight line coming across like that. Do you see where I'm up at? And then once you do that, you're going to make the letter U. We have a straight line. And then we want to make a U. And this U will come down. I'm trying to come so I make it inside there. Came a little bit outside my line. I can use my eraser. So I have my straight line. So what I did is I do my straight line and then the U right there, okay? Because what we want to do next is so the Cardinal can watch what we're doing here. Oh, I see somebody else maybe got loft out. We're going to let her in. Sherry comes in. So what I want to do now is we're going to do the eyes so the Cardinal can watch what we're doing here. So we're just going to use some circles here. And that's at the very edge of the eye. We want to put the circles right touching that line. So there we have our two circles for our eyes. Okay, and you know, if you feel like filling them in, they're usually black, you can do that. I kind of tend to end up doing it like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is not in the center, you're going to see that it's going to be a little bit above center of the U, is I'm going to come over with another line like this, and this is going to be for the beak. And you're going to see that I'm going to come up, to this line here, come down and like that. So I come up. So we made the straight line and then all we're gonna do for the beak is two triangles. Okay, so I come up and down. 
my triangle, and about the same distance up, down. So it looks like our cardinal is kind of singing to us as we're looking at that. Okay, so, so far we've got his face, we've got his eyes, and then his mouth, and his markings there, right? Everybody's good? Awesome, okay, now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna come over and I'll make a couple of dots so you can see it. I'll make them big and then I'll erase them so that you can see, but you don't have to, this is where I'm gonna be drawing some straight lines. I should come straight across, a lot of times I use my pencil, you know, to make sure that uh, I, I'm across. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to come from here. I want to come straight down, not all the way. Like that. Now that's going to be for his... And what Charlie Harper does all the time is he does double duty with things and sometimes triple duty. This is his foot, his wing. And on this side, it's also going to be his tail. So I'm going to come down like this. But then I also want to come up. And this is where the triple duty comes in. Not only on this side is it the leg and the wing, it's also the tail now. So we're doing the tail here. So we should have our two lines. While you guys are catching up here, I'm just going to erase my dots so they don't get in my way. Otherwise, it kind of looks like he has uh, four eyes. With those dots there. Doesn't it? Yeah, I know. Switch pencils here. So this line should be straight up and down. Same with this one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come straight across on top. Not too far. You can see where I did that. And then I'm going to come down and I'm making a triangle here, guys. So again, with this, we started with a teardrop, but then since then we've been using kind of uh, shapes all the way along here. Okay. Now, believe it or not, we don't have much to go here. So we want to do our cardinal's knees. So now we are going to put a little dot down here and a dot over here. One of the things that adding these dots for the knees does, not only it kind of breaks up the line, but it also goes to the eyes. It kind of helps bring kind of the whole drawing together. And that's the skill of an artist like Charlie Harper. He was able to do that with his repeating these shapes. Now like this, I'm gonna be working on his wing and I'm going to come over like this with a little triangle there, another triangle here, another one there for his wing. Now I'm going to do the same thing kind of on the other side. I come from this point here. These are straight lines. Okay, so there I've got my lines for the wing. Those are his feathers. I just love how simplistic these drawings are, but how much texture they actually have. So then I come up here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come over from this point. I'm gonna come up with straight lines. One, two, three. You can do more than three if you have room for four or five. That works fine for me. Now, when you're doing the cardinal, 
you can see, I'm going to show you the colors here. So you're going to make the U around there black. And the only it's like black and red is all we have here. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to add some footprints, which I think are really cute and help on the design is that we're just going to come with a straight line like this. And then we're just going to come back. And you can put, I always like odd numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and do I've got four. I'm going to do one more on this side. So I have kind of an uneven number of five here. In this picture, he's got some leaves or acorns on there too. But we're going to move on. That's the cardinal. I'll just mark down cardinal that we did here. I like this one because it gives you kind of a chance to warm up and kind of see how everything is going and how Charlie Harper does his drawings. How's everybody with this? Can I move on? Oh, I love it. I'm just going to check to see. Even for somebody for, like me who isn't very good at art, I felt like this was pretty easy to do and I liked it. Great. Well, I think that, that what, what I like about Charlie Harper is that he breaks these things down into shapes and it makes it kind of easy to put things together. And then you're able to really uh, uh, see them come together and you feel like you've accomplished something with his drawings. And they're, they're a lot of fun, as you can see. I think he's underappreciated. I hope uh, as time goes by, more people will know of the, the great work that he did over years. He not only did these drawings and books, he did lots of advertising, he did mosaics. He did huge walls of mosaics in uh, Detroit for the Ford Motor Company. So he's really one of these guys that are uh, simply amazing artists. So what I'm going to be doing now is I am going to move on to bird number two. And I think we're going to try this guy right here. I'll move over my cardinal. I'm hoping to do three. And if we have more enough time, we might even do a fourth. But this... I'm trying to remember what my, my bird is. I have to go back and look at the book here. I lost, uh, I know that my, uh, um, you want a clean piece of paper. And I'm just checking to see what, uh, I know that it's not the orange bill. Oh, it's the warbler. It is a black Warbian, Warbian warbler. That's why I, I was having trouble with it. It says it looks familiar, but I don't know. It's this pretty uh, uh, orange and black bird. And I think I saw one of these the other day uh, because it was like, no, that's not a cardinal. No, that's not a uh, um, scarlet tanager. I was looking and trying to figure it and now this bird looking at it looks very familiar. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to start by um, the shapes like we did before, okay? So is everybody ready to get started with uh, bird number two? Yes, I'm seeing yes, they're ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to set that so we can kind of still see it. Move my stuff off my... Still figuring out how to do this best, okay. So I'm gonna go like this so you can kind of see what I'm working at the same time. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna start with this kind of shape like this. We're gonna make this letter C. It's a backward C and that their head's kind of rounded. So you're just kind of coming with a C like this. 
You can see, and that's going to give it so that the beak is going up like this. So my C has got a bit of an angle to it like that. We just want, and what we're going to do to start with, guys, is we're going to do the, um, the bird's body and its wing first, and then we'll come back and add all our details. So I want to continue then with the C. And if, like with the cardinal, if you want it to be thinner, you make this a little bit thinner. If you want it to be chubbier, you just come in a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of coming, and I'm doing another teardrop here. I'm coming like that, and I'm coming over like this, and I'm connecting. So if you're thinking about it, this line is more straight. You can see that this one's more curved right here. Okay, so what I did again, I started with the C. I go with the letter C. And then I make this shape that comes down for his belly. And this is kind of doing double duties now. You're going to see that this is going to be his body, but it's also his wing. And then I come over, and this is kind of straight. I use my pencil so you can kind of see that that line. It's a fairly straight line. It can have a little bit of a curve to it, but for the most part, it's straight. Now, to get an idea where his tail is, I'm going to come right over here, and you can see I'm making a dot. It's not at the very end because this is doing that double duty. This is his wing. So his actual body ends right over here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with my Charlie Harper triangle for the tail. Come up, come across. I'm going to come back down. Okay, so I'm just doing this triangle. For the tail. So we've got our C shape. We go ahead and make the body and the wing coming straight across. And then we're doing this tail that's at it. You can see the angle. I always, like I said, I like to use your, use your pencil to see what the angle should be. If that tail is going straight up and down, that's not right. You want it to be more of an angle like my pencil is showing you there. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to come back and we want to do his beak. And we're going to go back to doing triangles again. Now I'm going to see if my, uh, I better stick with my, dark pencil, otherwise it might not show up. So what I want to do here is I'm going to come over like this and I want to do two triangles. So I'm going to make these dots. I don't, it's hard to see, but I'm making a triangle. He doesn't have a huge beak. So I'm making this triangle like that. That's triangle number one. His mouth is open. So then we're going to do triangle number two. Now the triangle number two it doesn't go all the way back to this point. It starts right here off the first triangle, and then we come back. So with the two triangles, we have now created this beak. I just love how these shapes kind of come together like that. Now, the line that we had right here, we're going to use this line for this top beak right here. And you're going to see what I'm going to be doing is using this. I'm going to come over like that and create the area for his eye. So what I'm doing is I'm coming right here. And I'm going to come right back to where this point is right here. So I come from right here and I just arch it up just so it's not a straight line, but it's got just a tiny, tiny arch. Just a little bit of a frown. Then I want to come, oh, about from right here, I'm going to make a dot here. And I'm going to arch a little bit like this back there. So you can see I didn't go all the way. I'm not touching there. Then I want to come. I'm going to give you guys a chance here to, I'm doing his, his, his head colors, which I think are really fascinating. 
So it comes like that, and then we come down. And I'm going to curve again from this line here. So I've kind of made this shape, this kind of V shape like that. And I kind of have the same, it's like a bubble V, sideways V. Do you see how that is, or a check mark? You I see that? a vacuum cleaner. A vacuum cleaner. I see a vacuum cleaner too. Uh-oh, it's sucking up my finger. Oh, went right in there. Very good. So I've got my vacuum cleaner or my check mark, upside down check mark. But then what I want to do is I'm going to work on his eye. I'm going to use my F pencil so you can kind of see the eye. The eye is going to come in between here. So it's going to come. You see how I did that? So it comes down below a little bit. And then we're going to do a little bit of a shape underneath here. So what is, it's not quite a, it is a triangle. If you look at it, it comes triangle into the eye there below his eye. So I've got a circle and a triangle. Do the circle and I come and do this little triangle below it. So we can see that we've got his eye. And then what we're going to be doing next, guys, is we're going to be coming from right here. And we're going to end up creating this wing again. So what it is, it's doing that double duty that we talked about. This line comes like this. It comes right down below the eye. And it's the wing. You don't have to go over. I'm just showing you how that becomes the wing there. Now, these birds have these kind of teardrop feathers as part of their wings. So what we do is we come from this junction point right here. I'm creating, again, it's that same kind of gentle arch. So we're repeating shapes again. This shape is here. It's there. We have triangles that are repeating here, there, underneath. These repeating shapes are what makes it so interesting. Now, his legs, we're going to go to his legs here, and I put a little dot right here. So you kind of see that, where that, wing, that uh, dot is there. And I'm going to come with his legs. Now, you can see if I'm looking at it here, I look at this angle, so I say, okay, it's that angle, so I want to come about that length. Got it. And I go, this one's a little bit steeper, so I come over here using my pencil. And then what we're going to do is that you got that. So now you can see another triangle, right? Triangle, 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 triangle. So it's repeating these shapes that make these images and these works so uh, powerful. And that's one of the things I like to have people see in this. So now he's got these speckles. So you can go ahead and add some little triangles. I'm going to do a bunch of little triangles. some bigger, some smaller, but I'm repeating my triangles on his or her chest. There, it's a he, I think. And you can see the colors. This is kind of an orangish color on his head and his body, uh, black and, and white for his wing. Now, one of the things we want to do is we want to, again, come over here and we're going to make another line coming down. So we've made another triangle right there for his tail feathers. Okay, I'm going to let you guys get caught up. Remember, you've got the triangles here. We've got our little wing. 
The next thing, what I'm going to work on is I'm going to add uh, a nice branch for him to sit on. Actually, he's not sitting, he's standing. Now, remember with birds, and I think that Charlie Harper kind of understood this with not even putting any talons here. What he was looking at is birds use their talons just to balance themselves. They're really never grabbing the branch unless they're climbing. So what I want to do, guys, is I want to come up from up here. I'm going to sketch in a branch. And I'm going to make it the end of the branch. And this is one of the things I loved about Charlie Harper is that he would do this with these leaves. So as you can see, I kind of come in with these lines. And then I'm going to turn the lines at the end of this branch into a leaf. So I just come from the center. I have a little bit maybe smaller one right there. I have another one that maybe is going to come like that. So I've turned those, that end, and then I want to make this a little thicker. So I'll kind of sketch in here with my pencil, making that a little bit. more of the line there. Now, I want to go ahead and maybe do another one over here. I just kind of come over, come down. I'm going to have this one come up. This one comes over. And then one comes straight. Okay, so then I've got my second one that I'm doing. I come over like this, and then I'll have a little one that's coming over here, one that's coming off the page maybe up here, just like that, and I can then make my branch a little bit thicker here. So you can kind of see that you can create these kinds of leaves. Now in this one, you can see that we have some more coming off the sides and some seedlings coming out. I, I tell people, feel free to add uh, your, your own details to it. But what he would do here is he'd have these branch like coming in from the bottom here just to keep the picture in balance. So I'm gonna add a few here. For some reason, I'm having trouble making the leaves look decent. They look terrible. Any tips for uh, working with the leaves? Yeah, for the leaves, the key, and I'll just do one right here real slowly for you, is what you want to do is you're just going to come in with that line. So you start with the line like that. Now that is the center of your leaf. So then all you're going to do is you come from the tip of the line and come back there's half the leaf, and now it might be not quite even, and I come back on the other side. So your leaves are always, this is the easiest way to do them because you've already created the form for it. So again, coming over like that, so I start with a line, then I come back. So the first line is the center of the leaf, and then I'm just going on either side. Hopefully that will help you with uh, creating uh, the leaves. It's an easy way, and it's a way that uh, going back to the time of Leonardo da Vinci, that's the way he was doing his botanical drawings. 
he'd start with that first drawing of the line of the leaf and he'd come through with that leaf and then he'd come over that line creates the center of the leaf great so what i'm going to be doing guys and i'm going to write down I've got to look at how this uh, is spelled, but this is a black Burian warbler. I'm going to write it down so you guys can see it. Black Burian warbler. When you see a warbler, you know that they're a singing bird. So we've done a, a cardinal and we've done, maybe that's my theme today is I'm, gonna, I'm doing all these singing uh, uh, birds today. So uh, we've got our black burring, warbler is number two. And then we're gonna move on to our next one. How's everybody doing? You ready to move on guys? Yep, give me a thumbs up. Let me see, Annika, let's see what yours look like. Hold it up to the, nice Danielle. Oh, I see that. That looks good, Annika. Oh, that looks good, Nicholas. Yeah, yep. Yeah. These are awesome. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Uh, this is also a singing bird, but it's not... We're not going to see it in Minnesota. We're going to deal with leaves again. This one, it's a togon. Now, I'm not familiar with this bird. I have not seen him before, uh, but I'm just trying to see what uh, they say about him. I had my little file with the togon, but I obviously cannot find it right now. But it's an orange bellied togon. And this is a tropical bird. And it is a singing bird, too. It's a pretty cool bird, isn't it? So, okay. So you need another piece of paper. And then I'm just going to kind of get you guys started so we can do this side by side. You guys can see it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. There we go. All right. So what I wanna do guys, I'll use my other pencil here, is we're gonna start with the head and it's gonna be this upside down U shape near the top of the page because he's got a long feathers. So just kind of come with a U. That's the shape I'm doing right here. Now, if you think about it, if it makes it easier, sometimes I'll make this like that, the shape, but you don't even need to do that. I'm just kind of showing you. But then once we get the U, the upside down U, we're gonna do this kind of teardrop shape. We wanna come and I'm gonna make it, oh, right about there. So I'm making a dot right here. So it's gonna come, it's nice to know where you're gonna end. That's why I like to sometimes make dots. So I know when I'm drawing my pencil line that I'm going to be coming to this point here, like that. And I can do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just trying to get it so they're somewhat equal like that. So what we have is we have the head, the U, upside down U, and then we made a point for where the end of his tail or his body is and we come and it's kind of a teardrop shape like that. Now what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna make some dots on either side like this. And these are gonna be for a rectangle. Now we haven't done a lot of rectangles, but Charlie Harper likes those. He's not just triangle and circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna come down. I'm making some dots. You can see how far I'm gonna come down. I'm coming down here for a nice rectangle.
And I like how he's, I, I saw a real toga and I wish I had a uh, picture of to show you, but it had these unusual feathers for a tail feather. He made them very geometric, what I really love. I love how geometric he makes those look like that. So then, see if I can get mine to be straight. I can, okay. Now, what I wanna do is we have the main part of our body just like that done. So what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna work on his head, okay? And then we'll come back and then we'll do his body and then his tail feathers. So I'm gonna see if my HB pencil, I'm losing my tip to this, so I don't know how well it's gonna work, is I wanna come up here, and this is gonna remind you a little bit of what we did with uh, the Cardinal. We're gonna come straight across where the eyes are. We're gonna come straight across. Yeah, we can see that. Now, the eyes are not gonna be circles. They're like um, a D-shaped half circle. So what I do is I come over here and I'll come over there on each side. And here it's obviously I'm making a D. You can see the D there. And then a backwards D on this side. Now if I'm using my, these are gonna be colored in. So I have it. Now, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna do a triangle and then a triangle. So I come from right here and I'm gonna come out below the eye like this. It doesn't come to a point here, so it's coming out. Now I'm gonna do this line kind of soft and the reason why is it's just a guideline for me to do the, so I'm gonna add a triangle. So then I come here and I can press hard again, and I'm doing another triangle. So we have the triangle here, and then a triangle right there. And then if you have your erasers, we can get rid of that little line there. Can you show that again, the triangle and triangle? Sure. Can you show that again? Yep. So what I did is, if you're thinking about this, we're not gonna go all the way up here, but I come down, I'm making this first triangle like that. So I come over, it's a triangle. And then the second triangle is an upside down triangle coming down. Thanks. So what I'll do now is, we didn't need that above the eye, but it shows you how the triangle is. And then we're gonna get rid of this line right here. Now, What's interesting is we're gonna repeat a rectangle underneath the triangle. So what happens here is I come like this and it goes to the edge of the triangle. So I'm coming straight down from that. And I'm just making a, a rectangle like that. So it's just, it comes from this point to this point. So it's the same, distance as the triangle is the rectangle there. So what we wanna do is that this line, I'm gonna make it strong so you can see how these all come in, I'm using, and this is where a Sharpie would come in handy because you could really outline these better than my thick pencil there. Now I'm gonna get rid of my That was for my head that I was using there. So then we're gonna move down to his chest feathers and we're gonna be repeating a rectangle. You can see this shape here is definitely a rectangle. And then we come in and this becomes a triangle underneath. So what I wanna do is I wanna come up and you can see I'm making my dots there. I'm gonna come straight across Okay, so I'm not coming all the way across, and then I'm gonna come down. 
I want to come across here, actually. I want to come across down here so I know where to end. Okay, so you can see I'm going from edge to edge. But then I come straight down on each side. So you guys can see that there. Now he's got his little rectangle up here. I'm going to come and I have to go ahead now and create um, his wings, which are going to be right here. So we come from this point right here. So I come from right there down triangle. Triangle. Before we do his talons, we need to have a uh, branch for him to sit on. I don't know if this is actually a branch or a rod like in a cage. Almost looks so perfect here, but we're going to say that it's a branch. And I want to come across. We'll end up using our eraser, determining what's in front and what's in back. This is in front of his body. Okay, so I just come across with two lines, creating that. You're getting those lines. We're not, we're gonna, when we get all done, we'll come up and do our cleanup and, and our erasing. So now, we want to come back to kind of the teardrop shape. So I'm right here and I'm going to do this teardrop. That's his talon or his foot. I'm doing another teardrop here like that. So we get the two feet. Now you can see that they're in front of the rod. So what we do then is we just take our eraser and we erase the lines that were there for the, you can kind of see that these are in front. Now what we also want to do is we want to erase the body lines right here. And then I'm erasing those so that we can see that the branch is in front of the body. I'm just going to shade it in a little bit so you can kind of see that, that this comes. And you can still see. those talons there. All right, so you can kind of see that we've got most of the bird already completed here. What we want to do is you want to add some more of these triangle, excuse me, rectangles. These are not triangles. Rectangles uh, that are going to help create the pattern of his tail feathers. So what we want to do is we're going to start right at the tip here and come straight down with a rectangle, a long skinny rectangle like that, okay? And then we're gonna come to the bottom, we're gonna come across. Now I'm gonna come continue with this and you can kind of decide what I'm doing is making these rectangles. I'm gonna color them in so you get kind of an idea of where they are. So this is my first one. So then what I want to do is I'm going to do some more coming up. So I come over here. Another one right there.
kind of shading them in as I'm going here. So I get these lines like that. Then we're going to come. You can you can shade them in, but we're getting this pattern. This tail is really pretty cool. This one, I'm not liking this one right here, so I'm gonna take your time when I'm kind of getting my trial. Now, what we wanna do is we're gonna come down with two more that come down and they come down, they don't touch the bottom one. We'll just come like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're just gonna finish up his tail by coming with rectangles coming across. And you can go right over these. I mean, this is because we're going to shade these in. And I'll I'm just shading these in so you can kind of see. Now, you can do this, obviously, with a Sharpie if you have one. Um, um, I don't use Sharpies on paper. You don't use Sharpies on paper? No. You can just use your pencil then. Okay. And then you're getting an idea of we have our toga on here. I'm just going to We're gonna do a little more practice with uh, um, some uh, um, leaves here. So I'll show you again. We'll just do one with the leaves here because uh, we're running out of time today. So I am just gonna come down with one more and this is gonna be behind. So I stop it. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna Again, like I did before, I come out with these lines. Okay, so you're seeing how I did that, right? So now we turn them into leaves by just coming on each side. Got a leaf there. Leaf there, and I'm using this, the line that I set up And then I can just come off. I'm coming off of my branch. I'm doing my lines first. And then I just use that coming back and creating my leaves. That center line is the key for making a leaf because it just gives it the direction you want. Now you can have as many vines as you want. You can add more things, but this is an orange belly togon. And I, it's a South American bird. I'm just seeing if I can find my, that was my, and I have a bunch that I'm looking at for, uh, future classes. So in September, I'm going to be coming back and doing some more of my uh, uh, birds. I have, uh, I'm going to share you some of the ones that I didn't get to today, if I can find them. That's the black burian. Uh, we've got this really cool green jay. I love that one. Uh, I've got my 
tropical toucan. I've got an owl. Another little bird. I've got a lot of them. So uh, just wanted to share with you that. I'm going to switch the camera so I can kind of see how everybody had done and they can share their pictures. I'm going to uh, um, see if I can do this. All right, video. Not quite done coloring the, the, wobble, the wobbler in yet, but. Here. That's okay. I mean, uh, it's kind of fun just to see where everybody's at here. And I'm just going to uh, see how everybody was doing here. Hi, Chloe. Oh, uh, neat. I'm seeing all my, uh, yeah, look, these look great. Danielle, I love it. You're already coloring. That's awesome. Lillian Harper, did I see yours? There they are. Very nice. Very nice. Livia. Janu, I see that you guys, you guys got caught up with it. It's great. Very nice. I see the McCannons, yes. Grace, yep. Cool. Boy, these look great, guys. Really like all, all everybody's work here today. Very nice. Well, listen, we've got some more fun things coming up. Oh, I like it. Uh, next week, so I hope we, uh, if you have a chance, you can join me again for some of these fun drawings, okay? Thank you, Larry. Thank Thanks you. for this class. You're welcome. You guys are great. I know you're going to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Guys. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Good job, everyone. Wizzy, wizzy, wizzy.